Medicare for All solves that problem. Medicare for All is the way to do that. We will get to Medicare for All. We have got to pass a Medicare for All single payer system. <laughs> Healthcare is not just a human right, it should be an American right. And I believe the best way to get there is Medicare for All. It's become like the Socialist Party. In fact, I heard there's a rumor the Democrats are going to change the name of the party from the Democrat Party to the Socialist Party. All right, not all Democrats. John Delaney, also a contestant for the Democratic nomination, had a different view from his colleagues on this very subject. Take a look. I think we should be the party that keeps what's working and fixes what's broken. I mean, doesn't that make sense? I mean, we should give everyone in this country health care as a basic human right for free. Full stop. But we should also give them the option to buy private insurance. And he got into some details on that very issue, saying about uh, hospital administrators with whom he's chatted that if they were paid at the Medicare rate, every single hospital administrator, quoting from him, said they, they would close. He joins us right now, 2020 Democratic presidential candidate, the former Congressman John Delaney. Congressman, good to have you. Nice to be here, Neil. Thank you. Um, that kind of fell on deaf ears in a party that doesn't want to hear that. Are you odd man out? No, I think most Democrats actually do want to hear it. If you notice when I said we should be the party that fixes what's broken and keeps what's working, there was a lot of applause because 150 million Americans have private health insurance. The polling indicates that well over 100 million of them like it, including our seniors, by the way. About half of seniors have Medicare Advantage, which is a private health insurance program. So, you know, this is an important conversation to have, and I'm driving the conversation and I think when people actually realize what's in this Medicare for all bill, I think the overwhelming majority of the Democratic Party, pu putting aside Republicans and independents, but even the Democratic Party will reject this plan and go with the plan I'm proposing, which is called Better Care, which does get everyone health care, but allows people to keep their plans and have private insurance. Well, you might be right in the end that that might be the way they go. They don't seem to be right now, Congressman, but you're closer to that than I am. But I, I did notice there was a point in the debate where uh, candidates were asked, uh, w would you swap out your private coverage for this government or Medicare coverage? Um, not everybody raised their hand, but if you did, Elizabeth Warren among them mm -hmm. and others, what did you think of that? Because a lot of Americans, 90% of whom have private insurance coverage, they might have their beefs with premiums or the rest, but they kind of like it. Um, and then of if course. they're told to junk it in favor of this, I mean, they get a little nervous. Neil, listen, it's a crazy idea, and it's never going to happen. And I am the only one, you know, I'm the only one saying this. And what's really frustrating about it is this whole idea came from Bernie Sanders, who's not even a Democrat. And all these other candidates, Elizabeth Warren and a whole bunch of the rest of them, have basically outsourced their health care plan to someone who's not even a Democrat. And I just think it's terrible. And I just think we have to have a conversation about this. And, uh, and many issues, too. I mean, you were just talking about China. I mean, one of the things that I didn't get a chance to talk about in the debate was the Trans-Pacific Partnership which is something I was a huge supporter of. And I don't think you can actually run against President Trump unless you are a supporter of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, because you have to have an alternative vision for the world. And the Democrats, who effectively rejected President Obama's efforts to do that, they were effectively taking us down the same path that President Trump, in my judgment, has taken us down. So there's a lot of important issues that I think are going to have to be discussed for the rest of this primary if we're going to put up a candidate that can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this president and have it a kind of an alternative vision for how we build our economy and conduct ourselves around the world. Well, as you know, Congressman, the president uh, walked away from uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. That would have really essentially yes. rallied all the Asian uh, nations and, and that region essentially against China here or, 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 or to, to sort of blunt its, its influence. It's actually gotten more uh, influential in the interim. Right. Does that worry you? That, Imagine that, how, how much would better you would handle be, it yeah. if a Democratic president came to whether you or someone else? How would you handle that? So the first thing I would do is get us in the Trans-Pacific Partnership. You know, there's 20 days left uh, after the next president sworn into office to actually get in the TPP based on the trade promotion authority that the Congress has given the president. So I'd get back in that right away. All right. And then I'd start dealing with China. I mean, China, they've acted like pirates. They steal our intellectual property. They're building illegal islands in the South China Sea. We need to actually be working with okay. our allies if we want to have a unified front to deal with this threat. Got it. Congressman, thank you. We'll have a lot more right after this.